Hello everybody, I just want well, a little bit quiet here. Just gonna let everybody know a little bit about Thailand and about some misconceptions and stuff like that. Now, rights as to buying house, houses, land, etc. Okay, um, okay, foreigners can't own land in Thailand. I think they can if they're American. Going up to technically they can, but it's still pretty difficult. Or if you're super super rich, I think you can have like if you've got like 500 million baht in a bank or something, I think you can have like one right land, one right land is 1,600 square meters. Now, uh, some people they do stuff, there's ways around it. You can uh, purchase a Thai company, you can own 49% of that Thai company, a limited company, and then you have to have another. Uh, fifty-one percent has got to be tie-owned, but you can you got to have you can have as many shareholders as you want. So you can split the tie shareholders into say you can have three tie shareholders owning fifty-one percent from different parts. So they couldn't buy you out. You'd be the managing director. You'd have all full voting rights. And with that company, you can use the tie company to purchase the land and the house. And if you Buy, have, a, have a company you can also use that to uh, have a work permit if you declare a share capital of over two million but with that work permit you can use it to build your own house or you could use it the work permit to do other stuff and just, and just giving a long story short other options is some people they do they get married and now uh, they get married to a Thai woman and then the Thai woman purchased the land. Now, if in a case where someone gets divorced, you do have rights. Foreigners do have rights over it. But obviously you can't own land. So in a case where if you got divorced, you know, if you got the proper lawyer, they would, the land would then go up for sale and the house and then the, uh, the, the, the value would then be split 50-50 technically unless you could work another way out, another solution where... Um, other options are you can lease for 90 years. I think it's 30 years with a, an option to extend another 30 years, 30 years, 30 years. Now, what I know some people do is um, they've come out here, they've had a Thai girlfriend or whatever, and they come on a retirement visa and they bought a land in their Thai girlfriend's name, but they leased it back to themselves for 90 years. Or thirty years, or whatever. Now, if you're coming, if you're like seventy years old, you want to just want to, you know, a holiday home to relax in, you know, live your last years. Then, you know, the the person can't do nothing to that property for at least thirty years. So, that's another option people do. Um, other options are sometimes people might purchase land in a Thai nominee's lane which is technically illegal but it's sort of murky it's not it's legal but it's not illegal now for example if if you got somebody's got a Thai person's got a massive asset in the UK then in theory you could you could swap you know the asset in the UK he purchases or she purchases with their Thai money in your name and you purchase the the put the house in Thailand in their name so when it comes to setting time, you know, you can't have each other over. There's there's loads of different variants. Condominiums, you can't 100% your name being a foreigner. Condominiums work in a slightly different way. Um, the building is 100%. Now each room is a percent, each sort of condo is a percentage of the building. Now, 51% of that building has to be tie owned. And that includes the uh, the lobby area. 49% of it can be foreign owned so if, if you own in the foreign section uh, one condo which is 5% of the building you can own 100% of that 5% which has got its own house address book its own electric meter so you won't own that that piece of property 100% in your name in a foreigner's, foreigner's name you get more of those deals in like Bangkok, Wahin and stuff like that Patia, Phuket, um, we've got more high rises there, you get some really, really massive mad condos, especially in Bangkok, like £100,000, you get like a two 
story condo and with all the fucking bells and whistles, bellboys and shit like that, fucking bellboys, I mean, people open the door for you, carry your luggage upstairs, reception, room service, basically like living in a hotel. Um, and these are the options as to properties, there's a lot of misconception that foreigners can't own nothing, that's bollocks, you can own your own vehicles, 100% your name, a lot of uh, some foreigners, I don't know that. They, they, in Thailand, you're only as good as the people around you. If you're surrounded by good people, you get good information. You're surrounded by bad people, you get bad information. I've seen foreigners buy cars for like 20 odd grand and they bought it in their wife, in their girlfriend's name. The girlfriend just lied to them and said, you can't own a car. And it's like a bollocks, you can own a car. You go to immigration, you get a purchase, uh, a guarantee, it's like cost 500 baht, a piece of paper to say you want to purchase a vehicle. They give you the piece of paper. You take that to the car, the uh, the car dealership, and they'll do the rest of the work for you. You pay them money, they'll give you a car, and then uh, you walk out with it, or the or you put your booking down, your deposit, whatever. You know, uh, so it's not all like you don't have to get married to a Thai to own anything out here. That's all a myth. You, I know a lot of foreign couples out here. Some of them find it easier just to rent long term. You know, rent nice places long term. Sometimes people rent the places, then they have the option to buy those places they rent. Or long term lease. Um, so, there's many options for buying and owning land out here. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, just clear that up.